how to handle hosting and domains when you're working with clients. Who pays the bills? Do you pay all the bills for the hosting for your clients or do they pay the bills? I don't even know why I haven't explained it before, but today we're gonna dive into it. I'm gonna show you what I suggest you do and what kind of providers you should use for yourself and for your clients. So let's first cover the basics of the basics. For every website, you need two things. One is a domain, which is the name of your website. And this costs around $2 a month on average or 10 to $15 per year. Hosting, on the other hand, is the space that you rent on a server to make sure that your website is live. This costs around $5 to $10 a month, depending on a lot of different things like speed, support and features. And with most of those hosting packages, you will also get your own professional email address. So my website is renodeboer.com, so I can create info at renodeboer.com. So you can create any email that you want in front of your domain. Now, a domain is something that you need to buy for every website individually. So that's easy. When you need a new website, you always buy a new domain. So yourcompany.com or yourcompany.org. For hosting, it's a little different. The first tip that I want to give is always buy the domain and hosting from the same company. It doesn't matter from which company you buy the domain, but it makes things a lot easier. Otherwise you have to connect those two things, makes it complicated and that's extra work for nothing. So make sure you buy the domain and hosting from the same company. The only thing you have to look out for when buying a domain is the availability. Because if a domain is bought by one person, then nobody else can buy it. And sometimes it happens that you have a client which has a company name that more companies have. And then if you want to buy the .com domain name, it's not possible. So then you can do two things. One is you can change the extension. So for example, change .com to .org or just change the name in front of the .com. Maybe use a dash when that's possible or maybe add a word to it. So that's all you need to know about domain. Where it becomes complicated is within the hosting. Because hosting, you can buy that for every single website individually, but you can also buy hosting for unlimited websites. And this is where it becomes complicated because when you have a web design business, that seems like a very good deal. Because then you can use this for all of your client websites right well that's not a very good idea in my opinion uh, but let's just first cover what other people are doing with their hosting some people buy an unlimited hosting plan for all of their websites then they charge the clients a small amount per month for the hosting this is possible with some hosting companies but with other hosting companies that's not even allowed some people sign up for a reseller account which is made for web design businesses and allows you to manage all of your client websites in one dashboard for a higher price per month than most of the unlimited website hosting packages so this sounds pretty nice in theory but in my experience this is not very practical so this is also what i do not recommend some people buy a single site license with their own credit card for every new client website so then they will also bill the client every month with an invoice for the hosting and in that way you have a different hosting account for every client and then the fourth group which is people that let the client buy their own hosting and domain for their own website and then that you tell the client to share the login details so that you can install WordPress and start working on the website. The first three options sound really nice but in my perspective you should only pick number four. Let me give you a few reasons why. Sometimes it happens that you don't want to work with the client anymore at some point but the client still want to work with you. This happens sometimes. So then, since you pay for the account and it's your hosting account, you need to open that awkward conversation and then if they finally understand that you want to leave, you have to do the extra work to make the migration happen. Simply because they can't do it even if they know how because it's part of your account. Maybe they want to work with somebody else or a new employee starts working on the website and then you also have to put in that work to make the migration happen because you still pay the bills and maybe they want to pay the bills at some point. I believe that they should be able to get rid of you without your involvement and it saves you work and it's their website at the end of the day. Number three. Three. <laughs> Sometimes clients go bankrupt. This already happened two times with two of my clients. 
And then they simply don't have the money to pay the invoices and you need to call them all the time and be like, hey, can you pay the invoices? But since it's just a small amount, you can't really make a big issue out of it because people that go bankrupt have way bigger money problems than paying for the hosting a few dollars per month invoice that you send them. So that's also a messed up situation where you don't want to be in. Reason number four. A lot of clients already have their hosting or their domain at another hosting company. And then you can say like, yeah, well, I can do the migration. Well, migrations are not really easy for average designers because it's a really technical thing. Actually, more than half of my clients already have a hosting somewhere. So then I just install WordPress on their hosting or if they already have WordPress, I just change the website on that WordPress install. I'm not gonna do some extra work that is not paid. So that's why all of those methods where you use one account where all of your clients are in is not practical and also not really realistic. Another con for your client is that you own the hosting account. So in that way, you are even in charge of their email accounts. You can delete the email accounts. You can change the passwords. And for most businesses, their email is very confidential information. They don't want the web designer to just have that power over their emails. You can even delete the personal email of the CEO, for example. And the last con that I wanted to share is that if you own their hosting account, for them, it's much easier to ask those simple questions like, hey, uh, Reno, can you create a, an email for our new employee or intern? Or can you change my password? I lost it. And of course you can say no, but those things like take one minute. And for tasks like that, you don't also want to send an invoice of like a few dollars. And again, you can say no, but, but you also want to keep the relationship with your client good so that's also less of an issue when they have signed up for their own hosting because then it feels that it's more part of their business instead of your business so what it comes down to is that their website their domain their emails is part of their business not your business so this is my perspective on the situation always let them sign up for their own hosting let them pay for their own hosting make it simple because you can go away whenever you want and they can go away whenever they want. And if they don't have hosting yet, just tell them the monthly costs that are involved by having a website. So say something like, hey, it's around $10 a month. And then just give them instructions on how they can sign up for their hosting account. Just tell them that it's as easy as buying a product in a web shop, because it is. They just pick a plan, type in their domain name that they want, fill in their info, and then they click on order. And then the only thing that they have to do is share the login details with you and then you can do your thing. And then you can install WordPress and move on from there. And if they then wanna throw you out, they just change the password, pretty easy. Nobody is attached to nobody. And if you are worried that your client does not understand how to sign up for hosting, just hop on Skype, get on the phone, just tell them where to click and make them sign up for the hosting. And what I've experienced is that most of the clients actually love this simply because it makes them feel smart because now they can do something that they couldn't do before. So now that that's out of the way, let's talk about your own website. What kind of hosting plan do you need for your own portfolio website? So before you jump into Google and be like, cheapest hosting plan possible, you need to think about what you actually need. And one of the things that you actually need with a hosting plan when you have your own web design business is subdomain functionality. So subdomain functionality is essentially a feature that allows you to set up different websites under your main domain name. So my domain name, for example, is renodeboer.com and my subdomain could look something like this, blog.renodeboer.com or shop .renodeboer.com. So the domain you paid for is always visible in the link. That's why it's not an option for your client's websites. So that's why you have to buy a new domain name for every client that doesn't have a domain name yet. But for your own web design business, this is perfect because you can use this as portfolio items. Because on a subdomain, you can run a separate fully WordPress install within your domain. You can link to that link in your portfolio without having to pay for extra hosting. So I've already done this with my health blog that I've built for my portfolio. So if you go to healthyblog.renodeboer.com, I've built this whole blog to show my potential clients that I can build a personal blog like this. By the way, the tutorial on this whole website will be very soon up on the channel. So I don't pay anything for this hosting because it's a subdomain, right? But it's a full WordPress install that I can show my clients, I can send this link to them and I can be like, hey, I can do this for you. And if you are worried that clients don't like fake portfolio items, well, let me tell you this, clients don't 
really care that much because they only really care about if you can bring them the value that they're looking for. And of course, real projects are always better, but this is 10 times better than having no portfolio items, right? So use the subdomains for your portfolio items. Create a lot of different websites so you can show your potential clients what you can do. And it's also a great practice for yourself to build a few websites without having to risk losing a client. Another reason why you want a hosting package that has subdomain functionality, because sometimes the clients are really slow. They don't have a domain name yet, they have not bought the hosting yet, but you want to start because you are already done with the design and you want to start in WordPress. Well now with a subdomain, you can just install WordPress on a subdomain of yours, then start building the website already. Then when they have a domain, you just download all of the content with a simple plugin. For example, this plugin. It makes it into a zip, you upload that zip on the client's hosting, and then you can just move on from there. So in this way, subdomains don't slow you down when the client is slow. Okay, so now let's talk about hosting companies. From my perspective, you have two different audiences that buy hosting, which are people that just want the cheapest hosting possible, or, which is the majority, just hosting that's good, that's rated good, but still affordable. And I think this is true for yourself and true for your clients. Most companies charge around $10 a month for hosting. And I know what you're thinking right now, but yeah, Reno, I saw all those hosting companies that advertise the hosting for three or $4. Well, yes, that's true, but those are discounted prices that only last for the first few years. And with a lot of websites that you buy, those websites, and especially the emails behind the hosting, um, will be used for a lot more than one or two or three years. So what you need to look at is the renewal prices and not just the discounted prices that they advertise. So what I've done for you is I have listed the main big players in the market with their discounted prices and their renewal prices for single site licenses which also offers subdomain functionality. So these numbers are a good indication for the actual cost for your client's websites and for your own portfolio websites after a few years. So as you can see, they are around $10 a month, but of course you should take advantage of those first few discounted years, which I've also done for my own hosting. I host with SiteGround and I've paid for three years already. So that makes it a lot cheaper in the first three years. The reason why I put SiteGround at number one, uh, because for one or $2 more per month, Month compared to the other ones, you get hosting from the company that is rated number one for a lot of years in a lot of different Facebook groups. What you also need to know is that companies like HostGator and Bluehost are actually owned by the same company that are known for putting too much people on one server, which is not what you want, of course. So this is why I host my main websites at SiteGround and I've made a few videos about them as well. I myself am on the Grow Big plan of SiteGround, which has unlimited websites, but that's not not for my clients, of course, but that is simply because I have a website for my own portfolio and I have the Living With Pixels website and I have another website for one of my businesses. So that's why I am on the Grow Big plan. So my main recommendation for most of your client websites and for your own portfolio website is SiteGround uh, because even on their cheapest plan, you will get unlimited subdomains, which is pretty nice. And again, it's only one or two dollars a month more than the other ones which don't have the reputation of SiteGround. So that's why I always recommend SiteGround. But I do understand that there are people who are on a budget. Maybe you're living in a country where the income is not as high as Europe or America. So what I've also done for the people that are really on a budget and that are willing to take a little bit of risk in terms of features, performance and speed, I've looked at all the different hosting providers that they are. And I've added a new link on the Living With Pixels website. So if you go to livingwithpixels.com and you, and you click on the page links, you will go to this page. And now under SiteGround, I've changed the page a little bit. So I've looked at almost all the main hosting companies and this is the cheapest that I could find. So let's just see what they offer. Uh, if you click on this link, you will go to their WordPress hosting page and their WordPress hosting is optimized for WordPress. So if you're building WordPress websites, then this is the package that you should choose and actually it's also the best package and as you can see they offer their package for 215 and the renewal price is only three and a half dollars per month 
and that is pretty amazing. Why I do not recommend that you pick their single site license because with their single site license, which you can find under here, they only offer two subdomains, which is not really enough if you want to have a web design business. So this is the cheapest package that I could find that offers subdomains and at a very, very affordable price, actually the cheapest on the market. So let's just add this to the cart because this price, like I said before, that's not for one year. That's when you sign up for four years. So that's a commitment. So what I recommend, if you buy a hosting like this, which is really cheap, that I should pick the 12 month plan. Why? Well, the renewal price is a little bit higher. So it's around $6, but that's still $4 cheaper than the other ones. But in this way, you don't take a lot of risk. Of course, you can also go for the four years, but then you will have to pay a little bit more right now. Because as you can see, if you buy this, you only pay 50 four dollars and if you click on this one you will see that you will pay almost double of that but of course it's a difference between one year and four year what's also great about hostinger is that from their 12 month plan they offer a free domain for the first year so normally you would have to pay 10 or 15 dollars per year for your domain so in this way you will save a little bit more money so let's say that i want to buy arena the boer 2.com I click on search and as you can see that doesn't add anything to the bill it's still $54 and then I have a .com name and then I can make it even a little bit cheaper because I don't know if you saw it already but there is a little line of text under here if you use the discount code living with pixels so if you copy this then go to the shopping cart and then have a coupon enter the uh, coupon code they even give you 10% more so then it becomes only 50 dollars for 12 months of hosting and a free domain for your first year after that you can of course change if you're not happy with them but that's a little bit technical so i would just choose like do you fall into the audience that just wants the cheapest thing possible or do you just want something that's rated number one for most people and it's still affordable then you should pick siteground i think those are the two audiences that could watch this video again i host all of my websites on siteground but it's worth trying a a company like Hostinger if you're really on a budget. I've been preparing this video for more than two days. It took me a lot of research to do this. So I think you have all the answers right now. But if you don't, just place a comment down here below and I will try to answer all of you if I know the answer. So that's all I can say for now. I hope you liked this video. If you want to see more videos about starting your web design business, you can subscribe if you want to. And then I want to thank you and I hope to see you in the next video. All right.